Today I'm bringing you the Brave New Words slot for today is M.G. Keeley. Um, he writes in various genres, including speculative fiction, magical realism, literary fiction, non-fiction review writing, and he's going to talk to you today about Turning the Hourglass, his current novel. So please give him a round of applause. Hello. <laughs> uh, this is chapter one of Turning the Hourglass. Uh, this involves me doing an American accent for a little bit, so if you're American, I'm sorry. <laughs> chapter one, August 2270. Dern's hands glistened blue under the electric light tubes. He rubbed his palms on his trousers as the elevator clunked downward and a drip trickled from his armpit to his bony hip, like always. Juddering to a halt, the cage doors rattled open and he stepped into the corridor that stretched ahead like elastic. His heels clipped the concrete floor as he passed under the white lights dotted along both edges of the ceiling. Silver doors lined the way, all labelled with numbers and complex names of equipment, half of which he still didn't understand. The air was much cooler down here and apart from his own echoing footsteps, the only other sound was the muffled buzz of machinery behind thick walls. Reaching the end of the tunnel, Dern glanced right, wondering if he might catch sight of Phoebe leaving one of the chambers, but the heavy doors were all clamped shut. She must still be in the middle of a visit. Turning left instead, he marched toward the entrance of the one open room, pod chamber three. Hey pal, right on time as usual. Alex's rare American drawl couldn't be mistaken. Dern faked a smile and shuffled inside the dim stone room. The electronic hums and clicks emanating from the control panels around the walls were louder in here. On a dais against the back wall stood the pod itself, the waiting pink sphere barricaded behind metal railings. Alex sat in his chair on the raised platform, wheeling from screen to screen, tapping buttons and pressing lights with quick fingers. Dunn coughed before asking, Can I change now? He wiped his pans, palms on the small of his back. Sure, go ahead and suit up. Alex called over his shoulder. Everything's pretty much ready. Turning to the corner bench by the door, Dern pulled the flapping grey bodysuit from the shelf and unfolded it with care. He'd perfected each swift step of the process. He faced away from Alex, tugged off his shoes, unzipped his trousers, slid them off and flung them onto the shelf. Halfway. Next, he stepped into the elastic suit, pulled it up over his shins and thighs, unclipped the white shirt, tossed it to the floor, yanked the rest of the suit into place and zipped it to his collarbone. His scars remained hidden. A small success. What did you say? Alex asked. Dunn realised he'd been mumbling to himself again. Nothing. He turned. Sorry. Well, when you're finished saying nothing to yourself. Alex had twirled in his chair to face Dunn grinning. The physicist's madly patterned shirt beamed from behind his unclipped lab coat. You ready to see how all this shit started? Hmm. Dunn stepped toward the pod. A section of railing had unlocked itself, and the neat door slid open, inviting him in. He climbed the stone stairs to the platform and crossed the threshold, stepping inside the enveloping orb. It supported his weight without budging. He touched its pearly smoothness with both hands. Observation date, 0903-2141. First North American attack. Say hi from me. Yes, Dunn replied, too busy picturing what he might find to laugh. The sheath door glided into place behind him. Click. The pod chamber sounds beyond the sphere became muted as if he'd been submerged underwater. Static shivered in his ears. Then the familiar shuddering overhead. The groan and whir of gargantuan machinery shifting, compressing all its power into this little egg. He swallowed a throatful of sand. The rosiness of the surrounding shell began to swirl and melt like ink dropped in water. The pink twirled into brown, black, navy, green, lime. Then the smoothness of the concave pod morphed and melded into angular shapes and lines and edges. Objects, furniture, walls, shelves. A flat ceiling, carpet. The light settled into mustard. Dunn stepped forward and felt the now invisible pod move under him. The surrounding images of the dull room shifted with him. He was here. 
the desk in front of him and behind it, the slumped president. Thank you. Um, if you would like to meet Matthew and maybe have a look at his work or just talk to him about it, you can find him at the Creators Hall. For those of you who don't know, that is in Quaker Hall across the courtyard. It is a big orange and yellow building. But for now, please enjoy the rest of the event. Mm.